Welcome back. So, dealing with a template vault. Now, if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've been giving away a template vault for Obsidian for the longest time, but a lot of other people also do this. So when you first start interacting with a template vault, what are the kind of things that you need to do? And that's what we're going to talk about today. How do you download it? How do you set it up? How do you get into this thing? And how do you make it your own and actually crack this thing open and use it? The best ways to support the channel are if you're going to do it on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors because they take no fees, followed by Patreon. If you're going to do like a one-time thing, buy me a coffee, PayPal or just fine. And if you just want to support me without any money involved, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. All right, so first things first, we need to actually download the thing. So this is like an example of the template vault that I give away. So you get to the link that I provide when you sign up to my newsletter, link to that's always in the description, and we're going to download this. So download, and yada yada, yes, download, and put it onto your machine. So let's go to downloads, save, and now I got it downloaded. So now I got this zip file. Now I'm going to unzip this. It might look different on Windows, but we're basically going to unzip that file. Now, if I open this up, you can see this is the template vault. So I'm also going to rename this. Hello, YouTube. Okay, so that is now the name of the vault. It's in my file system, so now what do I do? Well, the next thing we're gonna to have to do is import this into Obsidian, you guessed it. So let's open up Obsidian and we're actually going to go to um, this little icon over here, opening a vault. And we're going to say create or uh, open folder as vault because the folder already exists, the vault exists already. So now we're actually going to open up the folder, open. And now if I go to the downloads and YouTube and there's the vault, we're gonna select that folder open and now the whole vault uh, opens up now you can see that I get this little message uh, trust author of this vault well, actually this is new for me um, yeah you're gonna trust the author and enable plugins okay so that does a lot of what we'd like so now we can see community plugins are active they are already engaged we can check the about and you can see the current version the installer version now what you might want to do is actually double check these and make sure that you have the most recent version of not only the actual uh, installer, the current version of Obsidian, and the installer version. You might want to update these. For the community plugins, you want to also check for updates because you might need to update the plugins. You want everything to be all nice and fresh and updated because sometimes these template vaults can be a little older and outdated. So hey, 21 plugins to update. Yeah, let's update all of those. Okay, now assuming you've updated everything and everything is nice, fresh, and shiny, what are some of the things that you might want to do next? Well, for instance, inside of this template vault that I provided, I'm working on more documentation, but we have some documentation inside of the actual file. So we can you know, take a look at this, read what's going on here, and there might be additional explanations, things going on, uh, stuff you might want to actually look at, you know, explore a little bit, figure out what's going on here, what is in here, and from there, you will learn a little bit more about what is inside this vault and what you can do with it. So check the documentation. The next thing you might want to do is go to the settings down here in the bottom left and actually configure your plugins, your key bindings, uh, and take a look at what you have already established here. So if I look at hotkeys, you can see there's some conflicts. Those might, that might not be anything to worry about, but you might want to actually explore what things are actually mapped because this can be very important. This actually determines a lot of the behavior of your vault. So if you've been following mine, my key bindings don't really change much. Uh, there you go. And also like I personally use Vim a lot. So uh, I might sometimes forget to actually turn off uh, Vim. It doesn't look like I did here, or actually it's the, probably core plugins. Vim, yeah, I don't see it uh, anywhere in there. Editor, actually that's probably where it is. Vim key bindings, okay, so I did leave it off. Now sometimes you'll might, you might wanna check here because this, you'll have to turn it off if you don't wanna use Vim or if you're suddenly like, why isn't this vault working? Why is nothing working? Check that Vim is turned off if you don't wanna use it. I love it, so I turn it on for myself, but other than that, actually go through your community plugins. You can go through the bars over here and check your settings. 
check all the settings, figure out that things are set up the way that you want them to be, check your key bindings, and then once you've done all of that like infrastructural configuration, um, you want to start configuring your tags. So the tags are over here on the right hand side for some reason. So there are some tags already existing inside this template vault. It follows my existing system. Actually, I need to update this a bit, but these are where all of your tags are. And then figuring out, based on my template vault anyways, I do have a note called tag taxonomy that explains like what's going on with these. You might wanna actually take a look at this kind of meta information and modify the tags to suit you whatever strategy you want. But in any vault, the tags are likely gonna play an important role. So you want to check out what's the strategy going on with the tags and do you need to update this to suit it to your own purposes. Now the next thing you might wanna do is configuring the global graph. So the global graph, um, you can see that it does have some colors already in existence. And this is partly due to, you know, settings on the graph that's saved as part of the Obsidian metadata. But also there is some configuration in the CSS theme for this vault or for any vault. But my personal uh, CSS theme is provided with this template vault. So there are a lot of custom things in there that you also might want to take a look at. And if you've seen my custom CSS file, you'll know that I have a lot of organization in there. You can search by different tag numbers to find different entries inside of the giant file. It's like a table of contents. And there's a lot of CSS to change a lot of the way that things look. And that's the way that I like it. So you want to check out these things. Now, starred files have been replaced by book uh, bookmarks at this point in time. So you'll want to check out if there are any existing bookmarks, or if not, you might want to start making some and add your bookmarks here to keep uh, control and navigate better inside of this vault that you've now you know, taken on and just become more familiar with this. And then lastly for the configurations is you'll want to configure how you want your tab layouts. So some people like to have you know this sidebar and have several different tabs here, like um, I like to do the uh, calendar here and then I also put like the back links on the lower part, the incoming links, and then the outline on the second half. And I like to do this personally, that's just me. But configure how you want your tabs laid out. And if you do take advantage of it, there is also the workspace plugin, which I'm not sure it has, it's canvas, uh, manage workspace layouts. And so you can actually manage your layouts and figure out um, if you want to save different layouts for different purposes into um, a particular you know, saved layout. Uh, you might make use of that. I am not making too much use of that right now, but it can always make a comeback. If you're inheriting a, note, uh, a vault from somebody else, I highly, highly recommend you create a tag taxonomy note for yourself. It's not just for tags. It's also for just for like the metadata about your vault, how you're structuring and going about using this particular vault. And this can be useful for any template vault. So I highly recommend you fill out one of these and go through it and define and codify everything that you've done to that template vault. Especially if you take somebody's vault and you grab a new copy of it and move all your stuff over to that new copy, you might need to remember the changes that you've actually done to your vault, such as the key bindings and the plugin settings. These are all things that you'll want to pay attention to especially if you're going to upgrade versions of a template vault. Now, if you're paying for the Obsidian services of Sync and Publish, you'll want to actually configure those. Um, you can see I have one set here in this template vault, but you probably remove that and then actually implement your own. Um, so what you want to do is set up your Publish site, if you have one, or if you do that, and your Obsidian Sync service. And so Obsidian Sync would be right here. And so if you have these services, if you pay for them, they are awesome. Set them up and get yourself ready and set up. And then finally, the last thing you might wanna do is again, open up that global graph and just explore a little bit. Play around with the vault, see what's been provided for you and have fun. Always remember to have fun with this.